what is microbial? Normal flora of microbes. And you know, microbes, uh, uh, bacteria, fungi, and viruses, they live on human body or inside the human body. For example, on the surface of the skin, or in the intestinal tract, upper airway, vagina, and different parts of the body. Uh, Beneficial or harmful? Beneficial? Uh, what? Yeah. Uh, in normal uh, individuals, they are beneficial. But sometimes in the population, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes they may cause diseases. For example, uh, some of them are causes of uh, skin and soft tissue infections. For example, is that Pyogenes, propionibacterial acne, or streptomycetes <coughs> can cause different kinds of disorders. Yeah. And uh, they have important roles in normal health and development. For example, in the intestinal tract, they help absorb the digestive food, or uh, they maintain the integrity of the epithelium and uh, they have competitive, uh, competitively inhibit invasion and colonization by pathogenic bacteria. And uh, also in other parts of the body, they have beneficial roles. But sometimes we have dysbiosis. What is the meaning of dysbiosis? Change the position of the bacteria. Yeah, that it causes a disease. For example, when we use antibiotics uh, and uh, the normal flora of intestinal tract is killed, uh, we may have infections by some toxin producing the streptomyces types, and we have pseudomembranous colitis. For example, in patients who are hospitalized and they take vindamycin, the normal bacteria in the GI tract uh, are killed and they will have pseudomembranous uh, colitis due to clostridium disease. And uh, they are also, you know, they can also be seen, uh, for example, the microbiome in the stool of all these individuals is less diverse than those of the individuals. And the proportions of bacteria will differ as well. Uh, or sometimes, uh, in, for example, inflammatory bowel disease, the bacterial population or uh, even the viral population of the GI tract is different. Mm -hmm. So they may, be, uh, they may cause different kinds of diseases. Or sometimes, for example, you have an, uh, a defect in the mucosal lining or in the skin and uh, the normal flora such as Staphylococcus aureus or candida can cause infections. In intact mucosa or skin, they cannot cause infection. But when there is a damage, yeah. Yeah, they may cause infections. Now, uh, what are the techniques for identifying infectious agents? Can you name some techniques? Biopsy. Biopsy. It's a bit invasive. Uh, Microscopy, serological process. Uh, uh, for example, stool examination. Stool examination for, for example, diarrheal diseases <coughs> or, sorry, I should have said this. Culture. For example, we can uh, do some cultures, different types of cultures. What do you see here? Habitat practical culture media, outdoor culture media. We can use culture media for detecting bacterial agents, fungal agents. 
the Indian pack culture in India for other types of microorganisms, viruses, etc. But uh, we mostly use them for bacteria or fungi. And sometimes we take biopsies and uh, we use HNX and slides to uh, diagnose infectious diseases, such as, for example, as we said, CMV, herpes simplex virus. Can we see bacteria in histology in uh, HNAS infections? Yes. yes. We can see bacteria, and especially if the clumps of bacteria are detectable uh, with light microscopy in HNAS infections, but we prefer to use a gram uh, from a sneeze because we can say whether it is gram positive, gram negative, broad shape, both sides. It is difficult to uh, keep, uh, for example, coxi or rod shape in uh, HIV. It's possible, but it is not that accurate. And uh, we can also detect uh, animal elements. We can detect protozoans, tail means because they are big enough. And sometimes we use special stains in pathology. For example,
quantitative only tells us whether there is infection or not. But quantitative gives us viral load. So we can use them for, uh, for example, uh, assessment of uh, response to treatment. In PCR, we just amplify the load. Yeah. So, how much virus is there? By real time PCR. And then we can use the Quantitative PCR and real time PCR are same? No, we have different types of quantitative PCR. Yeah, 
size of a quid bowl, okay? And hemp size can for leishmania or plasmodium, antibodies, culture, DNA, or mechanics for different kinds of infectious agents. Anna, we have to uh, remember all this table. I mean, this table is important. This table is important, but the reason is important. Microbiome is important, but the things I said, for example, about the influence of helminths, they, they are not so important because you know that they are maybe for microbial chapter. Uh, okay, what are newly emerging and re emerging infectious agents? Do you know any newly emerging? Second and third layer of Corona. Yes. Uh, again, Corona. Corona is re-emerging. No, newly emerging. Yeah. Yeah. Because this type of coronavirus was newly emerging. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, newly emerging. But some you know, bacteria are re-emerging. For example, you may have heard uh, that there, uh, there has been, uh, you know, there have been some cases of measles, for example. Uh, in the past two or three months, or for example, smallpox, for example, gastritis, gastritis, gastritis. Yeah, some some types of gastritis. Uh, okay. So uh, we have some newly emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases. Uh, why do we have newly emerging infectious diseases? Because of the suitable environment. Because, because of the suitable environment for the agent. Yes, uh, you know, change in the environment. Because I say newly emerging. Uh, the uh, environment has been changed, and uh, that's why this kind of infectious agent is common now, for example. And sometimes uh, some pathogens existed, okay, but they were not discovered. discovered. And they are discovered because of improved methods of detection. For example, H. pylori. H. pylori uh, causes, as you know, gastritis and gastritis yeah. disease and was discovered in 1980s. Okay. It existed, but it wasn't. Yeah, because of uh, you know the methods were not good. Sometimes, for example, like what we see in COVID, COVID-19, uh, animals are sources of new pathogens that infect humans. For example, in COVID, we have it was said that it is from bats. Yes. And sometimes uh, there are some mutations in the genes you know. and it causes the microorganisms to be More resistant. Different. Yeah, to be resistant and they can uh, enhance some virulence and overcome mass defenses. For example, it has occurred in Escherichia coli which produces toxin in uh, 211. Uh, a new strain of virulent shigatoxin producing E. coli has been discovered, for example. And sometimes uh, that's because of immune suppression, for example, because of uh, AIDS, or for example, because of advanced uh, treatments for cancers or organ transplant. Okay? Uh, we have some immune suppressions and there will be emergence of this uh, new, uh, not new, the bacteria that can cause diseases in this, uh, you know, immune suppression. So because of treatments for cancers or for organ transplant, 
to avoid rejection, we have new treatments that make the patient immunosuppressed and uh, the patient is prone to infections. Now, bioterrorism. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, bioterrorism. What is bioterrorism? Uh, use our microorganism to kill people. Yeah, mm -hmm. kill a uh, large number of people. We have different kinds <laughs> of uh, microbial agents in bioterrorism. We have different categories. Okay. Category A, B, and C. Category, hello, why don't you listen? You are not interested in bioterrorism. No? <laughs> no? It's interesting. I don't know how the human can do this. You know? It's very strange. Okay, category A. Category A includes some agents that can be readily disseminated <coughs> or transmitted from person to person. <coughs> they have high mortality rate and they may cause pandemics. And they are likely to require special action for public health preparedness. One good example is smallpox. Other examples are, for example, bacillus anthracis. You may have heard that uh, you may uh, receive an envelope and you open it and there are you know, the spores of bacillus anthracis in it wow. and as you inhale, this is, uh, you know, this is a typical example of biotourist agents. Bacillus anthracis, cholestridium botulina, Yersinia pestis, Variola, major virus, smallpox, and Francisella uh, tolerances, tolerance, and Ebola, and other last time, other hemorrhagic fevers, which are viral. Category B. Category B agents are less easy to disseminate, and uh, the diseases that they cause have a moderate morbidity and low mortality. So they are less dangerous. And they require a specific diagnostic and disease surveillance. And uh, many of them can be spread in food or water. For example, Rusella, for example, Polystridium perpendiculus, for example, Salmonella, E. coli, Shigella, and other agents. And category C agents are emerging pathogens that would be engineered for mass dissemination because of ease of availability, production, and dissemination, and they have the potential for high morbidity and mortality. For example, they are, are they common agents? Mitovirus, antivirus, no, they are not common agents. But they can be engineered in a way that they cause high mortality and uh, become disseminated and they cause uh, epidemiologies. Okay. The next uh, section is how uh, microbes are transmitted and disseminated. Okay. What are the routes of entry of microbes? Skin, nasal cavity, mouth, oral cavity. Urogenic skin and different mucosal lines. And we have some defenses against the microorganisms in each of these parts of the body. For example, in the skin, we have epidermal barrier and some other defenses that I will tell you later. And in different parts, we have different defenses. For example, in the skin, we have a dense, cracknized layer. Okay. It inhibits uh, entry of microbes. Or, for example, the 
types of fatty acids that inhibit the growth of some microorganisms. Sometimes when we have a defect in the skin, for example, a wound or a surgical incision, bacteria will enter via that defect. Or when we have burns, or sometimes because of some ulcers, for example, in the other patients, we have ulcers on, uh, or some bed sore, ulcers, bed sores, pressure ulcers. These are the roots of entry of microbes. Or, for example, when we have intravenous catheters, they are a root for entry of microbes. Or, for example, when we have needles. Uh, what is the most common bacteria that has uh, a, a virus that has a high probability of transmission when there is needles among HBV, HIV, and HCV, which is um, <coughs> more probable? HBV, HBV, HBV. Yeah, HBV is more common than HIV or HCV. Yeah. And sometimes uh, some penetration may uh, be seen in the skin because of an insect or animal bite. Uh, but uh, can uh, can we see uh, infectious disease in normal skin, intact skin? Yes, for example. For example, uh, there are not the parts, fungal elements that uh, grow in the cartonized layer which uh, overlies the skin. Or sometimes uh, some uh, helminths example, such as uh, schistosomal larva, they have enzymes that can enter normal skin. So normal skin is also prone to infections, but it is less common uh, than uh, infective skin. And we also have uh, some uh, defense mechanisms in GI tract. For example, in stomach we have Acidity, yes, that exactly. we have acidity and we have in other parts of GI. We have pancreatic enzymes, we have bile, yeah, and we have which one is that antibody? IgA. We have some protein such as defense in, yes, exactly. So we have different kinds of uh, defense mechanisms in GI. And sometimes because we take anti-acid medications, we will have low acidity of uh, you know, stomach and this makes us prone to infectious disorders, for example. Vibrio, for example, yeah? And uh, or when we use antibiotics that uh, alter the normal bacterial flora, as I said, when we use thymiamycin, for example, we, we will have pseudomembranous colitis. Or sometimes when there is a problem with cristalsis or a mechanical obstruction, may also be prone to infectious agents. For example, uh, sometimes uh, uh, you know different microorganisms cause GI disorders, uh, you know, GI infectious diseases uh, from different pathways. For example, uh, in staph oils or bacillus cells, we have toxin production. Some of the microorganisms uh, adhere to mucosa and they proliferate and they. Uh, produce toxins, for example, vibrio cholera or enterocytogenic epilepsy. Some agents invade, yeah, and they cause bloody diarrhea or dysentery, such as Shigella is the most common, Salmonella, Campylobacter are among these agents. 
such as influenza, uh, influenza uh, they spread in large respiratory droplets. So they cannot travel no more than three feet. But sometimes, for example, about BZP or TB, they spread by a, a small droplets and they can travel long distances. We also have fecal oral route. What is fecal oral route?
example, they prevent synthesis of uh, critical host uh, macromolecules. They, could, uh, they produce uh, degradative enzymes and toxic proteins, and at last, they cause apoptosis. Apoptosis by which has been
Khanam, can you repeat this? The difference between endotoxin and exotoxin. Exo 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 Cut off something. Cardiac insufficiency. No, the meaning of shock, I said hemorrhagic shock. Yeah. Blood supply will blow. Blood supply. Blood supply. Effective blood supply. Because sometimes we have enough uh, volume in our vessels. But shock is loss of effective supply. And we said we have also exotoxins, yes, which are proteins that are secreted by the bacteria. They may be enzymes and they may be toxins. Toxins have two components. An active component which has the enzymatic activity which is called component A and a binding component. It binds the cell surface receptors and delivers a protein into the cell. You know, for example, here you see anthrax toxin. Okay, it is B subunit which helps A subunit enter the cell. Okay, and after that, A subunit will, for example, let out factor because cell does edema factor. And we have some uh, neurotoxins, enterotoxins, and we have some super antigens. Super antigens. What is a super antigen? Antigen. It will activate our immune system. Yeah, it simulates large number of pieces. So we will have a proliferation of pieces and cytokine release, large amount of cytokines. And we will have symptoms of toxic shock syndrome. For example, we have superantigens in estaporins or estrepiogens. Okay, the last part is morphological changes in different types of infections. For example, in some infections, such as HPV infection, which is common in liver, you have infiltration of monoclonal cells, which are mainly lymphocytes. Okay? In some infections, you have 
predominance of plasma cells, for example, the syphilis. In some infections, you have granuloma, such as what can we see? And what, uh, in this picture, uh, of course, not that uh, This is an example of cities, and there is infiltration of plasma cells around the vessel. But here, these are plasma cells. Do you know uh, the morphological characteristics? They are oval shaped and their nuclei are eccentric, but it is not that obvious here. And here you have infiltration of lymphocytes in liver, and it is a case of viral hepatitis. Uh, sometimes you have cytopathic effect in, uh, for example, viral. Uh, and uh, we talked about it and we saw the picture of it. And sometimes uh, some invasive microorganisms cause tissue necrosis, for example, clostridia or, as I said, thrombohistolytical causes, ulcers in uh, the gut, and sometimes uh, in liver it causes abscess formation. And sometimes, due to chronic inflammation, we have skeletal. For example, what do you see here? These are the eggs of Shistosoma hematoma. And around them you see, do you see much inflammation? No. Instead you see fibrosis and scarring. What is this? A vessel, yeah. These are the blood vessels. And what is this? Ectelium lining of bladder. What is the type of ectelium in bladder? Transitional. And here you see that around these eggs you have fibrosis and scar tissue, and some of them are calcified eggs. Here you see a calcified 